In today's video, I'll be showing you how to tie my three favorite winter steel head flies, including the intruder, camo squid, and the dirty hoe. And if you stick around to the end, I'll even be showing you when and where I fish these flies so that you can increase your odds at swinging deal heads successfully. Flies I'm tying in today's video were designed by Jerry French. I've had the pleasure of fishing with Jerry many times now and he's become like a mentor to me. His knowledge and expertise have had a huge impact on the way I interact with this sport and quite honestly made me a much more successful angler. All of the hardware that I'm going to be using in today's video can be found on Jerry's website. There'll be a link in the description. So if you want these flies to function the way they're supposed to, I recommend picking up the hardware that they're supposed to be tied on. To kick things off, we are putting a 20 millimeter round eye shank in the vise with a hot pink medium cone on here from Aquaflies. Next, we're gonna start our thread. This is white 140 denier. Then I'm gonna take some Power Pro braid um, 50 pound braid of your choice really. Now I'm going to tie this to the length that I want the fly to be. To be precise, this comes out to be exactly two inches long off the back. Your way forward. And then what's cool about these aqua cones specifically is they're actually large enough at the opening, even with the shank in them, to allow you to just do all of this right on the vise instead of having to take it off. Um, so what I've done is I've just put the braid through the back end of the cone, through the round eye shank, and then I'm gonna come back through the front of the cone on the bottom. And what that's gonna do is actually gonna help secure our cone nice and snug against our shanks. It's equal on both sides. If we hook a 20 pound steel head, it doesn't pull this out. Then I'm going to take some white barred rabbit strips and it's gonna come out of the bag in a big, you know, long piece like this, of course. So what I'm gonna do is naturally try and find the straightest part of it that I like the most. So if I turn this side here, I want to cut the flesh just about equal to the length of the braid, um, maybe a slight eighth of an inch longer. Now that I've done that, it's a pretty good time to just go into that end and cut it into a triangle. If you don't have another vise, just do it in your main vise before you start. Now the goal here is I actually want to make this into a micro rabbit strip. So I'm going to cut it not quite in half. I actually want it slightly bigger than half. You now have this skinnier side, much skinnier side, which will be perfect for skinny hoes and little summer flies. We can keep that to off to the side. Then we'll take the side that we left about 60% of the hide on, and that's what's going in the vise. So we're tying that perfectly in on top. At this point, I always like to stare straight down the barrel of the fly, if you will. What I'm looking for here is that I've perfectly aligned the rabbit strip with the up eye shank. So I'm just gonna pull off a um, you know, little bit of this orange dubbing here. We've got that. I'm also gonna pull off a little bit of this shrimp ice stub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull half apart, lift my thumb, lay it down so it's even again, close my thumb, pull half apart. So we're just stacking materials. So once I've got that basically laid out into a square, I'm going to put that down over the back station on Jerry's composite loop card. This is also available on his website. So at this point, I'm actually gonna take some of this prototype Crackle Flash, I believe it's called, from Aquaflies. This is not out yet. So I'm not gonna lay those right on top of our back station here. Um, and I don't really feel the need to sandwich them in or anything. These are all pretty sticky. They're gonna hang to each other just fine. So I'll just spin them up just like that. We're gonna make a small, about two inch loop here. Wrap two times around the base, that's important. Tie it down. Just three wraps is fine. We don't need to build up a bunch of thread. Go ahead and throw your dubbing spinner in there. I'm kind of managing a lot of stuff here at once, but I'm gonna open up this loop and I've got some low tack wax. We're just gonna wax the loop. This for pretty much everything in this pattern. Don't need a ton. Sparse is cool. Hold it down with one finger, spin, 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 spin. And I just feel for attention. I want it to feel almost like a little bit of a spring. Now, time for the best part. Go in with your wire brush. Just beat the devil out of it. Next piece of the puzzle, H2O. Just wet your fingers. Got a little thing of water next to me. So not on top of each other, um, but right in front of each other. The reason we get it wet is so that we can actually see the hackle we've created. We want to polymer that hackle up the shank one wrap at a time. Moving into the forward shoulder, pulling off some more of my orange here. Oh, pink wanted to come out. Oh, what the hell? Pink wants to come out. Let's let it. And we're just going to do our little trick. 
We wouldn't want to tie with a feather that was all mangled up and clumped up, right? We want the ones that are nice and straight. So now this specific dubbing is quite long. So what we're going to do here, the best of our ability, we've pulled it out. And we're going to cut it right in half. It's going down on the forward station. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make like little, kind of prying it apart with the, my fingertips. See what I'm doing? What we're really aiming for is we want to get pretty much all the way up to where it says Jerry's composite loop card is that that is exactly how far you need it to be to fold it back over on itself. Now, speaking of other materials, I've got some more prototype stuff from Aquaflies here. I know some of you are probably chomping at the bit. Don't worry, be out soon. Yes, you can wrap a brush. But also, you just cut stuff right off of a brush. About an even, uh, even size that's just as big as the forward station on our card. I'm going to pinch it in my other hand. I've now got that shortened. So you've cut that to that size. Coming over to the card, and we're just laying that down. So from one hand to the other, it's a just a bunch of trade-offs, right? So I put it down, one hand, I trap it with the other, and we get that laid out and just poking it about so that it's perfectly within our range. And the way that I've placed this down is that it's essentially 70% on this side, maybe even 80-20, 80% on this side. Um, that's going to create a denser bottom of the hackle. To that, I'm going to add some Predator Wrap, Senyo's Predator Wrap. I'm going to get that the same length that we just cut our brush to be. Spread it out in your fingers first a little bit. Going for a slight varied length on this. Just a, I never like everything to end at the same point, so more of a 60-40 thing going on with this, basically to the end of the dubbing. And lastly, got some Polar Flash here. Not perfectly even. I don't want to come across like this. Come over here. As they're going down, as always, they get spread apart, and I try and keep them perfectly parallel. I've got this guy set up, so we're going to pick up our top half of our dubbing. We're just going to fold it over and sandwich it. We can press that down, but while I'm here, I'm going to be adding my eyes in. So, I mean, I'm holding the orange, but I have the pink, but this is, <laughs> this is what the eyes are. The way that this works is I'm going to line them up so that the eyes are even, pretty much like that. Near side can see, I can play around with the length where the eye is going to sit. We think about this in ratios. We have the third of a fly, third of a fly, third of a fly, and we can use those as reference points. I get to end right at the end of our rear station. Now I know I want them tied in there. I can cut these. Since we're here, we can actually take them out. We're going to tie into the shank and squeeze it between some pliers. Give it a really good squeeze, wiggle this a little bit. This is round. Round things like to slip. Cool, let's make it flat. Perfectly in line with the shank. And I'm just gonna do four tight wraps to hold that one in place. Do that same thing on the other side. So I wanna come over here and get this perfectly in line with the shank at the right length, of course. Now I'm going in for my tight captures. So I'm capturing both down all the way to the back, capture them both down all the way up to the top. We want these to be perfectly level on either side and just as long as each other. Now, I should mention, it's not typically how you tie this fly. This is a little bit of my own flair. Um, not really, you know, Jerry's done it this way as well, too, with these eyes, but it's typically tied with jungle cock. I have a personal obsession with these eyes, so I tend to put them on just about everything. They also have these really good um, fake jungle cock eyes. So now what I've got here is I've got some silly legs. I've got a gold and black, and I've got a pink. They're both barred. We're going to take those down to two-thirds length. What we're going to do, actually, is we're going to put two in just to hold them so now we can manipulate them. We can kind of wiggle them down. We want them to sit um, under the eyes. Hold the two that are facing forward now back and then we're going to put a wrap over those, another wrap over those. On my side, pull them back, do the same thing. Then I just hold them back and make sure that they're at the right proportion still. I don't want them all to be the same length so I'll cut some just slightly longer than the eyes. Take a few and Pretty much randomly chop them. I'm going to take all of them and I'm taking a little magnet and I'm just capturing those down right to my vise. I just got two pieces of pearl flashaboo go to the back of the rabbit strip, capture them down and then I fold them over and I create like a V and I catch it on the other side. I just realized while I was editing this I forgot something. So you want to take about eight to ten ostrich fibers and put them right over the eyes to two-thirds length of the fly. This loop gets waxed as well. And I'm grabbing our forward station, placed it exactly how we built it on the card, and using that central line for reference. So the thread is the central line. 
The final thing I do is I kind of just hold it in my hand. I'm just spreading that all out, getting it to lie perfectly parallel. We spin that guy, grab your wire brush and just beat the devil out of it. Thread tight to a point where it, it kind of stops spinning on itself. It just sits perfectly. If it starts to spin out one way on you, just use your tool and start spinning against it the other way. Now we're just going to spin that up. So I'm just going to do the first wrap the most carefully, kind of pinching it back, constantly actually spinning the thread counter to the way it wants to tilt, keeping everything even. Now there's just enough room for the forward hackle. So I'm going to tie this guy down, trim that. Be careful not to cut that thread at the same time. Decisions, decisions. We're building our forward hackle. Now on this guy, you can see what we went with. We went with like that kind of white that's right here. Natural ostrich. We're going to be using the natural ostrich again, but I think I'm, I'm leaning for contrast kind of down into the cool department here. We've got orange and pink building up forward. I think we, we either go blue or purple. Let's do some purple here enough to perfectly cover our forward hackle. It's about a quarter of an inch overlapping on each. I'll take the other half, just put it to the side for now. Now I'm going to take some of this ostrich. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look for how long I want this, just about on top of forward station. That we then I'm just going in and cutting. Honestly, I really like to use a clamp at this point. Seriously, just go get a bag clip. Carefully just put those down, and I want those to fall right into the middle of my dubbing. We then take our dubbing we set aside, that goes right over the top and we sandwich it in. Good time to get it wet again and pull all those fibers back. Put a wrap in. We're going two and a half inches again around the base. Throw our wax in. We're grabbing our forward hackle. Start from the top. Pick it up gently at first and then get your other fingers under it to support it. That's what that looks like. Open your loop nice and wide. Worked hard to get stuff the way that it's supposed to look. We want to be careful to come in here and jam it and all of a sudden everything's all messed up. Now I'm actually going to spin that up. And an ostrich is pretty damn durable, so I'm okay with just going in with the wire brush. I just do it a little bit lighter. And we go in, and we start to wrap that. Just like always, start at the back, slow and steady, put that forward. And we get under it with our thread. Again, put your finger between your thread and that while you're cutting it. One, two, three, four, five, boom, and chop it. Size two aqua talon. Do not even waste your time with another hook. I actually want to go through the point side of the hook. And then actually he's going to ride up. So we're going to switch it around. Just easier to put it on that way. Point of the hook is towards the rabbit strip right now. We're going to open that loop, put it over the hook, spin that loop, go back over the hook. And one more time, we're going to spin it and we're going to go back over the hook. Going through that with the rabbit strip. And then I'm just going to pull on that, tighten it down, but not completely. Just get it so that it's actually, you know, I didn't pull on it hard. Just got it so that we can still play around with length. Braid is cinched to the point on the strip where there is no slack. And you'll know you've done this wrong if there's like a big bulging loop of braid, right? What that means is that you have to either pull the rabbit strip from this side or from this side to get it so that they're sitting flush against each other. I'm going to go in and any trapped fur before we do our final big cinch. Strip out of the way. Just going to hold the hook and against the vise I'm just snugging it tight. The reason it's my go-to fly is because how fun it is to cast. The shank, only that long, it's 20 millimeters long. We're gonna bar it on the bottom side. This first one's gonna start just there. I like to do one actually on the strip right where it attaches. Then from there up, we're just going boom, boom, quarter of an inch apart, boom, boom, boom. I'll even go in and freaking boom, 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 boom. We're building creatures here, folks. Creatures. Now, one of the things I would encourage you to play around with is the types of cones that you're using. So if you want some very predictable sink and rise rate and be able to fish broadside and heavy current, I would go with a nice heavy tungsten cone here. Um, we, of course, have a smaller tungsten cone. Obviously, have your colored aqua cones here, both in larger and smaller sizes. If I could only tie one fly and fish it all winter long, it'd be the dirty hoe, and then I would just have an arrangement of different weights in my box. Only thing that's changed is we're going for the 26 millimeter round eye shank. You could also use the 33 millimeter. 
you're putting in an order, go 20, 26, and 33 millimeter on the round eye shanks. That's what I use. You're gonna take some of that same Power Pro braid that we used on the Dirty O. And we're gonna take some ultra rig tubing. I've got the black here. I'm just cutting off about an inch of tubing. All I've got here is just some wire. Hold that in half, and then we're gonna push it through the tubing like that. So now we have a very small loop at the other end. I'm gonna push my braid through that little loop. And then it makes it nice and easy to pull your braid right through the tubing. Size two aqua talon. And then we're just going trailer hook style, so loop over it. These hooks are killer. I don't feel the need to double up or anything on that. The way that this works, you give yourself enough slack and then hold it nice and tight. And then you're just gonna grip it with your nails and push it right up onto the eye of the hook. Just over the eye of the hook, just like that. So same thread as before. So then what we're gonna do is we're gonna position it so there's about a quarter of an inch of the shank, which is probably in your vise. Left, capture some of this down. You can work that back. Then, the other side, again, these cones are awesome. Some of the only cones you can do this with right on the vise. Push that through, right through the eye of the shank, and then back through the front of the cone. Supports the cone, sits just right. That tied down, that's not going anywhere. What I actually like to do is I'll take another small piece of tubing over the point of the hook, take our magnet, and get that right out of the way. Uh, why don't we do some like black, blue, and purple kind of stuff for this guy. Pull some of this glue dubbing, get that nice and organized. Working on our back station right now, so we'll lay that down. Then let's take some of this um, crackle fiber here. That goes down, our little dubbing sandwich. Push that in, set that to the side for now. For our forward station, let's go ahead and do some purple here. So we're gonna grab Prilobal. Half goes down on the forward station, other half to the side for now. And let's take some of these, uh, these are ripple ice fiber, quite long. Got those, purple. Now these guys don't actually break apart quite like the Aquafy stuff does, so we're gonna cut them in half. Put these right down on our forward station. Pull out some angel hair, cut off an inch and a half of that. Place those down, 70, 30, 60, 40, somewhere in that range. And let's do some uh, predator wrap as well. Inch and a half, goes in the pile, back of the finger, your leftover dubbing. That's done. We're gonna make a big old loop, right out of the way. We got our nice little blue back station. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in our forward station. Yep, there we go. A couple good hard spins. Put a lot of shit in there. Let it brush. And just beat the devil out of it. Pull this all back. Pinch and roll, pinch and roll. Nice controlled turns. One right in front of the next. B and then one, two in front. Again, hold them at the length. See where we want them. Right at the back there. And then the pliers. Pinch, pinch, pinch. And honestly, I've tied some of them so that they they sit a little bit towards the top of the fly, some of them angled a little bit down. Play around with it, have some fun. Done the same exact thing on the other side. Make sure we're lined up. I'm using an Aquaflies cape here. It's the best capes I've literally ever used. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull different thicknesses and different lengths. Take one from the right side, a similar one to that from the left side. And let's have some fun. I'll grab some, some blue ones as well, actually. Two of these guys. The key here is we're going for different profile. So much smaller, thicker at the base. Long ones, still different from each other, and two shorter ones, still different from each other. So you end up with four, just measure them out to kind of the down, and then I'll leave some of that down in. One, and then again, this one, actually tie this in a little bit of a different length here. This one's gonna fall back here, on top to the other side. Cool, those are sitting nicely. This is gonna be the longest one I've done so far. Yep, just slightly longer than the blue one. That's tied in. I don't know if you've noticed, but I like to tie some pretty big bugs. Four and a half inches long, five inches long. Uh, we're gonna take this guy, and the bottom on the other side. Four feathers, varied lengths, varied sizes coming off the back of the fly. Nice stable platform to tie on. Cool. Now, silly legs. Let's go for some contrast. You got some pink here. Two of each on each side. Got them a little more than halfway. And these guys are going kind of on the bottom. The same thing on the other side. So we're working on the bottom of the fly right now. The bottom left and bottom right. Capture them down, one, two, three. Pull them back, go over the folded back. One, two, three, cool. I'll come forward and then I'll hold all those back. So my next loop, let's go dark, go black. Half of this away, forward hackle. Now let's switch those out actually because a little more than half is on this side. So what I've got here is a faux fur cape from Aquaflies. Most everything in this video are available on Jerry French's website. A fair bit of this 
off about an inch. And I'm kind of like a hairdresser at this point, right? You're like cutting straight into it so we don't just eh, throw that down. Throw down some more of those lavender fibers because I can't get enough of them. Boom. Lay those down a little bit differently. I'll have some hanging off the other side. 80-20 on the faux fur. 60-40 on the fibers. Now if the dubbing goes back on, you got a nice sparkly black dark forward hackle. So we're going to take a little bit of body braid and create a little bit of a separation here. So this is technically two stations. Not very much, but it is. So it's an inch to wrap up that forward station where everything comes together right here. Oh, wait. See, sometimes we forget stuff in time. Flash. We got a shitload of flash here. I like flash. It's not really gonna matter too, too much that it's um, in front of the body braid. It'll all get supported and start flowing in the water anyway. Cool deal. Pick it up, put a finger or two under it. Now, it's a really good chance to see where you want it to fall. I want it to fall right pretty much in line with the eyes. Kinda angle it towards the front of the fly so it doesn't catch any of the legs or anything. Just beat the devil out of the forward hackle. So. You can put ostrich in here if you want. You don't have to. You just use something like a faux fur. Oh, speaking of ostrich. <laughs> usually I tie this with, I tend to forget it more than I remember. A little bit of ostrich coming right off the top between the eyes. I'll start wrapping that up behind the cone. Do not cut your thread. Three, four, five. Boop. Take your magnets off. We're going to take our tubing, put it onto the shank, and push that forward, pull your hook, and do that a process a few times. So look at that, huh? I'm going to brush this guy fully out from the back. Moves a ton of water, those eyes staring back at the fish. Pretty freaking awesome. Time in white, time in black and blue, whatever. They're going to crush. Now Jerry always says they don't get the size they do eating bugs, nymphs, right? <laughs> and they, they eat big wiggly stuff. All right, the intruder. So all we've got rigged up here, you learned how to do the braid and the ultra rig up through the eye of the shank and come back down on the underside. It's a 50 millimeter shank by Aquaflies. Take these small dumbbell eyes, the smallest size on uh, uh, Jerry's website. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna position those a little bit back. We don't want them right snug up against this uh, return eye shank. We want them about where the back of the return eye shank um, meets its meets itself. Now this is super important that on these big intruders with these 50 mil shanks or 48 mil shanks, we're using these tiny little eyes. I've had the privilege of learning quite a bit about the history of the intruder from Jerry, and these flies are not meant to be fished heavy with big dumbbell eyes. If you're putting eyes like that on your intruders, it is an absolute nightmare, a nightmare to cast. And it's not the point. This isn't supposed to go deep. It's not supposed to sink fast. It is a big profile fly that is fished in the upper third of the water column, not on the bottom third. Very much so a come and get me fly. With that being said, we've got our platform set up. I'm just gonna pinch a piece off in my fingers here. I'm gonna pull that apart and we're gonna stack it on itself. Cut in half. And it's going right down on the back station. So I've got half of it there. The other half set to the side for a second. I've got some predator wrap for the back station. I've just got a, a bit of a shorter amount here. So I've got about an inch long for these fibers. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add in some of our crackle flash here. Then going to lay our other half of the dubbing over that, making just a small two inch long dubbing loop. Boom, work that forward. Gonna wax our thread. Just carefully pick this up. Open the loop up, pop it in. We're gonna catch it using the line guide on there. So it's already organized and I just pop it in there. Boom, more fibers on one side than the other. We're gonna spin that until it comes tight and it's got some recoil to it. Brush that out, fingers wet. We're just gonna wrap nice and carefully. One wrap in front of the next. Work back with our thread. Now it's important, we don't do too much thread because you can very quickly ruin the look of your body. You'll end up with a bunch of thread on this side and it narrows down. That's not a cool look. We want it nice and even. I'm gonna, gonna go in with some pink ostrich. So looking at the length of this, 
what we want. It's going to be a pretty big intruder, about five inches long. So we want about inch and a half past the hook length where our longest ostrich should fall. Now, when you're tying these, please, for the sake of our wild fish, when we're using these stiffer hooks like this that kind of stay where they actually catch the fish, um, you know, big wilds still have to come up and crush this thing. You don't want to be deep hooking them. Tie in your longest fibers, inch and a half, two inches past the length of the hook. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a half an inch of those, about 10 or so. And then we're going to pull it out, stretch nice and tight. And then we're just going to start from the front. We're going to bar this. Can't stand flat colors. I've I've got to touch it with the Sharpie. Yours is already barred. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Now shake that out. Now you've got barred ostrich. Okay, so we're going to capture these guys down just on one side, five wraps on them. And then one thing I like to do actually, wet your finger, lick your finger, and then bend those back the other way and rub your nail against them. It'll create a really sharp, almost 90 degree angle in there. Go in and cut them nice and close. The other method is you could work it up the body and create a thicker body, but I'm all about reducing the amount of bulk on this fly. I like to tie them kind of big profile, but keep it sparse. One, two, three, capture those down. They're not going anywhere. I'll take my hook, get this guy out of the way at this point. Could have done that after we measured it out. Oh, just cut off the same amount for the other side. And tie that on the side. One, two, three, four, five. We're just pulling it back with our nail once it's wet. And then we can slide our scissors into the bottom. We've got that awesome clean cut there. So we're gonna capture that a few more times. One, two, three, four, five. Work it back, work it forward. And that's not going anywhere. Now that they're tied in snug, just spread them out a little bit in there. Some to the bottom, some to the top on each side. Cool deal. Keep them out of our way. We're going to take some of the medium Unreal Jungle Cock. And we're going to tie those in right here. So with the medium already pre-cut. So I'm just going to tie that in to the same point where we stopped tying in the ostrich. So just about 32nd of an inch there I'm catching it by. A few wraps. And I'm just keeping it level with the shank for reference. Looking at that. So I've got that tied in. One thing that I'll, I've done that I don't think I really talk about is if it starts getting unruly, I'll like lightly fold it on itself. So what happens, what tends to happen is as you're doing this, it breaks apart more and more. So you could take the top and fold it down, take the bottom, fold it up, and then you just get a nice working section again. So this is something that just takes some practice. Um, just keep tying flies, keep building composite loops, and you know, um, take your time. You'll get this to the point where it's automatic. So I'm just going to break it in half. The ice dub's pretty easy to work with, um, pretty easy to break and reshape. So goal with this is I want it pretty short, a half an inch, five eighths. The goal here is I'm just going to pull it apart and I'm working to build a big, long, short piece of this. So check this out. I'm going to lay this down on back station. I'm actually going to work this all the way up to forward hackle. What I'm then going to do on top of that is take some more of my crackle fibers. Feel free to use ripple ice fibers. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to spread it out, lay it down right over the scrim we've just made. So at this point, that'll grab a little bit more ice dub. So we've got this big, long composite loop set up here. And I've just got some big long gold tinsel here. So right at the back here, I'm gonna capture this down and we're just gonna go ahead and work this forward. And we're just working this forward. Now we've got this wicked cool reflective body here that really catches the light and mirrors it back out. Now I actually forgot to leave my thread back here, but that's okay. So um, we wanna make a big loop here, ideally. So if you're doing this, make your big loop first. And I mean big, we're going five, six inches here. As big as you can make it and still handle it and reach it with your index finger. Capture that down. It's not gonna matter, this is white thread, pretty much translucent in the water anyway. We're gonna get our wax. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna grab our big composite loop that we made. I'm gonna spin all of that. And we're gonna palmer this up the body of this fly. It's pretty cool, it's gonna be really glowing from the inside out. Grab our wire brush as always. These guys are getting a little annoying. No problem. Water. Let's brush this out so you have one nice consistent thread. Spin this. One nice full wrap in front. 
right in front of our back station. And then we're just gonna hold it at a nice angle and we're gonna spin this forward. I actually like letting it get a little wonky here, meaning I'm not particularly combing it back in any big way. And we're gonna leave some room for the eyes and make our last few turns of this. It's kind of the start of our prop for our forward station. Work our thread back right in front of that. We're going one, two, three, one in front. And then cut the thread. Now we've got this super, super buggy, flashy underbody glowing as the light source is changing from the inside. It's that really long stuff from before. So we're gonna cut it in half twice, that down over the forward station. But as always, I'm gonna extend it out because I'm just gonna fold it back on itself. Then I've got this awesome peach fur cape working section from the side, get down to the size that I want it with our cutting in technique. And we're coming over to the forward station. We're laying this down, spread it out. Just go lifting your finger when you place something down, kind of lift it slow, see what's sticking, and then get it off you. Take some shell pink ripple ice fibers. Those are going down. Now, predator wrap. I went for black, just straight up black and the normal one. Um, Cause I want some contrast here. Pink or orange, like we're working with here. Shell pink, sure. Um, that's just kind of blend into everything. I like to pick a few points to add contrast in. I think these black flecks in there are gonna look great. We got that built, we're gonna fold this over the top. Cool deal, set that off to the side. Now we'll grab some white dubbing. It's another one of those really long ones, which is okay, we can just cut it back. Goes over the forward hackle, and that's actually a little bit too. You don't want harsh edges. Those don't look super cool. I've got the other half sitting, ready to go here. I've got different color ostrich, shell pink. So, where do we want this to fall? Let's measure it first. I want it to fall right to the eye. I don't want it to be too short. Right here, we're just not touching that yet. What will happen is it'll actually create an eddy behind, um, and these will get sucked into it, and it looks pretty weird. So you want them to fall proportionally, or basically to your jungle cock eye. So that's pretty much perfectly what we've got here. So I'm gonna be able to just cut this right off of here. These, cut them off, a clip. Now the key here, we want the ends of the ostrich to be a little past the middle of the line. Because remember, that's your thread. Okay, so we've got dubbing centered. I wanna catch these guys, actually let's, a little more dubbing on that side. And think about these here. I want to catch these guys just a little bit to hang on to. I don't want to put them too far because then I'm going to have a bunch of tag ends on the fly. We don't want that. But right about there. Cool. That looks good. Take our other half of our dubbing. Go for our four or five inch version again. Thread out of my way in front there. Forward station goes in. Remember where you picked it up from the line, how you want it to fall. That's the part to be the most careful with. Make sure you get your finger under it properly. Support it so it doesn't come apart. I want those ostrich fibers to lay perfectly how we placed them. So that's how I've placed them. Um, we're just gonna go in there with our needle now that you've got that perspective. Get the station and hackle to actually touch each other. I'll push that up a little bit. Spin that up till it's got a little bit of a bounce to it. Now I think one of the mistakes people make is they don't do this long enough. We're actually trying to really work that thread down to one nice even small diameter in the middle there. That's what I'm looking at. I've got that thread in there, nice and small, that natural point first without water where it wants to sit. Nice and tight, one right in front of the other. I'm just managing all of our materials. Thread and catch that. One, two, thread. Do not accidentally cut your thread. Cool, when it's like this, you can see the sep true separation of these stations. And brush it back. I take white. My other camera died. You didn't miss much. I just barred this to our hook point about. So hook points there. Just before that, got these guys kicking around. And by the way, we are in front of the eyes. One, two, three. That's it. Push it back with your nail. Boom. Nice and tight. One, two, a few pieces of that. The left side that go about the length of the fly. Catch it once, twice, pull it back once. 
We're just gonna do the other side, so two, pull it back, one, and honestly, you could stop right now, but I'm gonna take it to the next level, grab our cape back, curving this way, curving this way. The way we're placing this down is going about the same length as our underwing there, something like that. Okay, so to hook point. So I like how it's sitting, go to the other side. These guys I actually do like to match. Most things I'm like, eh, make it a little bit different. Guys, get them close. Bring some of that down in there. So the length of the feather you choose should be so that it's the right length when you tie it in, um, leaving some down. Just got one, two. Set it how I like it on that side. I'm gonna hold them down. And they can shift pretty easily at this point. So hold them down how I want them. Four nice tight wraps. And that'll set them in place. And you can actually set that in too. So now, those are never going anywhere. Two, three, four, five. That shank exposed. We're gonna just set our ultra rig in place. Now, we got a proper, super squiddy, big come get me intruder. So this is my intruder box. They're all pretty much, you know, ranging from two and a half, three inches up to my bigger four and a half, even five inch intruders. These are all tied light. I don't have heavy intruders. I'm always gonna opt for a heavy tungsten dirty hoe or leech and, you know, some, even a really heavy camo squid. These guys, the shank is just too long. It's gonna be such a pain in the ass to cast a fly. Um, they're very cool though. And where I would fish this specific fly, um, like the one that we tied, would be in the same three to six foot deep, even current, um, tail outs, anywhere where I actually want the fish to come up and grab the fly aggressively. Push this thing. I kind of want to be able to drop in behind rocks and be more technical. When I have a dirty water day, high water day, predictable swing rate, um, and I'm fishing relatively close to me, if I don't have to huck, I'm going to probably choose the intruder. Fishing the camo squid, I've been fishing it all morning, we're about to do a fly change. And I'll tell you why. So this is the, you know, black and blue camo squid that we tied with the hothead. And we've been fishing through some shallow rifts, some tail out stuff that's, you know, six feet deep, three feet deep riffles and stuff. We're about to head down to a piece of water that we'll show you in a second. Um, and we're gonna do a quick fly change actually. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna fish in this situation and why. We've walked down to this big high bank. We're gonna take this guy off. And so I've got my fly box here, and knowing that I'm going to be fishing something that's about 9 feet deep, 9 feet, 10 feet deep on the outside, it's going to be swinging into a 5 foot high bank. Um, big rocks, big structure. I'm not going to be casting far. I'm going to be throwing out, and you'll see that here soon. Um, and just fishing short, but I want to be fishing right away. Now, whatever color you're confident in is fine. Really what's important here is that we have one of these big heavy tungsten cones on, or big tungsten bead, whatever you have that's gonna drop really quickly. I was looking for that this morning. Ow. God damn it. Hurt yourself? Yeah. Nice. So what did you fish before? So I was fishing a camo squid, and now you were fishing the dirty hoe with the same size cone this morning, and you swung that fish that we'll show um, at some point in this video. And we could have fished either or there, right? Really all we were doing is fishing something that was gonna get down to the middle of the water column. We're not dredging with those flies, but they do start to fish right away. The hose, oh my gosh. You cannot beat that fly design. I don't know, I haven't found anything I like more. Stickly, you could fish a different way to the dirty hell all winter long in three colors that you love and be effective. Um, sometimes it's nice just to be like, I've been fishing this so much, let me, oh, what the heck, I'll throw something else on. Um, and if I were going to, it would be the intruder with the camo squid. So let's head down here and we'll start fishing. So we're down at the water. You can see the structure that I'm talking about here. We have this huge, deep current. We're up against the high bank. The other side's soft. And so this is where that tungsten cone's gonna come out to play because I wanna be able to cast short and drop right away. Feed some slack into it, and then come into a swing. I'll never be casting more than probably 30 feet here right below me, still five or six feet deep. Um, so I want to be able to be in the zone, stay there. Um, we'll show you what that looks like. Mm -hmm. 